Welcome back everybody to another episode on the 25 gallon lagoon. So it's been about six months now, maybe. Um, but uh, if you've been subscribing and watching and seeing the uh, progress of this tank, you've known that it's ran into its nice list of problems, um, including a bad magnesium test kit, hair algae on the sand bed, a failing Chato reactor that just caused more problems than it was worth, um, even down to uh, some hitchhikers on the torch corals. Um, so it's had its fair share of troubles and it's been kind of like a roller coaster ride on this tank. Uh, I'm not sure. I've, I've had my issues in previous tanks, but this one's, it's been a nice up and down. Um, but so far, everything has balanced out. I've balanced out my dosing and pretty much the, the bio load on here. Everything seems to be okay. Um, the best part about this update is me telling you about the colors of these corals. The coral colors have pretty much um, exploded. Uh, they've gotten really good. I'm more than happy with it and I've, I've been feeding reef energy and reef roids and uh, Kent phytoplex in the mixture of those in the mixture with the reef energy and uh, the reef energy I feed every day and if you haven't watched my previous video, you should probably go ahead and do that and you can see how I feed the reef energy and I basically saturate the water with the uh, food and just let it sit there for a good 30 minutes to an hour before I turn the pumps back on. And I've also removed all my mechanical filtration. The filter socks and the sumps are out and I basically just have the intake media baskets sitting there with no mechanical filtration. They're just kind of in there blank right now, um, which I'm kind of leaving them that way. I'm seeing good benefits. I just want the food to last as long as it can and circulate through the tank as it can without having any issues in the, uh, in the tank, um, like nutrient explosions or anything. But you, if you don't know, I do dose the Nopox, which is keeping that under control. But um, yeah, something very important that I didn't discuss that I don't see a lot of people talking about that on, uh, online is um, on YouTube specifically since I, we're all here today, um, is the importance of checking your water, your, your water that you're gonna do the water change with and your uh, salt mix, basically. Um, when I had that bad magnesium test, I thought my reef crystals was bad, low on magnesium, and even even reading up on it, there was cases that supported that, that people got bad batches of low magnesium. Um, so I was thinking I had a bad batch of salt. So I got Reef Pro Salt, uh, Red Sea uh, Pro Salt, and I tested that and then realized my magnesium test kit was bad. But I carried on the day and just, just checking that magnesium and that uh, salt and started doing my water changes weekly um, and then come to find out what I didn't know was I was giving my tank really bad alkalinity swings and the uh, Red Sea Pro Salt is, sits at around 11 and a half, 12 dKH and my tank was at that time was sitting uh, at about 8, 8 dKH so every time I would do a water change the tank just would not look happy it, it, you know, usually I was used to when I do a water change, everything looked refreshed and would pop right back within a couple of hours, but it was taking days. Um, coral was looking kind of stressed out and I, I couldn't figure out. I just, it just slipped my mind to think that, that I, I was doing something bad. So a good pointer for you guys out there, make sure you're changing your water with the closest parameters you can, or at least two parameters that you, you want to be at. And um, so I've, I've actually slowed down. Last water change I did was with reef crystals. So it's been a few weeks since I've done anything with a Red Sea Pro Salt, which I don't think I'm gonna do again, considering that high DKH. But I've let it sit um, going on about two weeks without a water change now. We'll probably go on another third week since things are doing good. Um, probably won't change water until I notice any negative side effects. But uh, so far the dosing that I dosed, the calcium and the alkalinity, and I dosed a B-ionic, um, I put 10 mils of the alkalinity and 10 milliliters of the calcium. And so far that is staying stable at about 
between 420 to 450 calcium. It's staying flat on, on DKH at nine. And uh, my magnesium is nice and stable, um, right around 1350. So everything in my parameters on that front is right where I want it and is not really moving. So I've got that dialed in and balanced on that front. And uh, so on the biological load here on the um, bacteria dosing no pox, I've pretty much was dosing one mil of that um, every day. And, and it says on the bottle one to two milliliters per 100 liters. And 100 liters is roughly between 25 and 30 gallons. So in my opinion, I, if you want to dose no pox, I would not go anywhere above one mil per 25 gallons. Honestly, it is very strong stuff and you will experience basically what I have experienced where your LPS will, it'll start to hurt. They, they won't be happy and, you, and you'll know it. Um, so in that time, uh, the past uh, about a week and a half, I've dropped the dosing of the no-pox down to half a milliliter, uh, half a mil milliliter. So I have basically cut it in half overnight. And in doing that, one thing I, I've known with the experience I have with no-pox is that um, if you miss a day or two, you usually, you'll immediately notice a nice diatom bloom kind of on the sand bed and on the surfaces. And, and I started to get that and I started to get kind of a, a slight hint of cyano. And that's one reason why people really don't like no pox. But the thing with no pox is you have to be very consistent. And um, having that experience with it, I knew that it wasn't really a major issue, you know. But if, if I was to just cut off the uh, no pox completely, I would have big problems, and I know that. But I, I carried on and maintained that half a mil for about a week, and usually about four days, four or five days in there, in that I could see that all of that um, nuisance diatoms and hints, very slight hints of cyano, started to go away um, and did as I expected, just leaving it stable and let, it, let the tank adjust by itself. So I've done that and now everything on that front is doing well too. Um, so, and then also I've been feeding heavily, um, maybe not heavily, but if you watch my last video, the reef energy. And I feed reef energy every day and every couple of days I'll add a small amount of reef roids with that reef energy and then I'll alternate and do another couple uh, days maybe two times a week with a uh, Kent phytoplex um, um, phytoplankton and uh, basically just been feeding these corals trying to get them fat and juicy and what I've noticed is my coloration has been getting extremely good and coming out of these corals colors that I haven't seen before and um, I'm really pleased with that and I am going to continue doing that for the future and hopefully we'll see great results for the future of that so stay tuned for that um anything else in that uh not sure but i'll, I'll show you here the some close-ups of the coral and uh having you know good parameters and seeing everything going good i did what most of us reefers do and i bought a couple corals i bought a, a green slimer and this ultra torch green torch which i saw um, if you know in the beginning I had one of these, it wasn't as green as this one, so when I saw this I had to have it. But that last green torch I had had those uh, flatworms on it and just in a panic it was dying and I just got rid of that torch and the rock it was on. But I've taken care of that um, issue. It, those flats, flatworms even spread to that torch back there, but luckily just a couple times dipping and I haven't seen those flatworms since. They weren't the regular red ones, they were large flatworms, um, like Euphelia flatworms, I think. But yeah, as you can see, this coral is doing pretty good. They've been in here about a week, this and the green slimer, and the coloration is just awesome. Moving on, zoanthids are doing a lot better. There's my little clowns. <laughs> The pinks on this zoanthid are coming out excellent. I don't, uh, you know, I don't know if some of these colors could get any better. This one, hopefully I can get that view in here for you. But when I bought this coral, it was kind of like more of a dullish blue. And recently it's just been turning into this more purplish blue and starting to get this 
prominent gold coloration coming out. Um, clowns really want to be on the video today. But yeah, you can see there. Hopefully you guys can pick that up. Yep, I'm really happy with that. And it's, it's awesome when you get a coral and you start pulling more colors out of it because you know if that thing was as colorful in the uh, fish store, they would have definitely charged you more for that piece. Uh, GSP is doing good now. Um, these zoanthids not doing so well, but the, the odd thing is, even though I know that some of this LPS is not into, in full bloom, it's not stopping it from coloring up really well. This, this um, zoanthids, they just basically had like a regular green um, on the outer edges of, a, of, of the polyps. But now it's turning into like this bright neon, like yellowish green. So it's, it's, it's crazy. Hopefully, I don't know if the video will do it justice, but I'm really happy with that. And everything else, the Aiken's doing well too. This mushroom never really expands. They don't really have the best for uh, water quality for mushrooms, I guess. I never really, they kind of just stay constant with me. But everything else is brightening up. These, uh, these are growing really well, the uh, bird's nest and the fluorescence is still coming out on that one bird's nest. And the green slimer, I was trying to get an acro. I don't know, you guys can comment but down below, tell me how hard do you think it is to keep one of these. I was trying to get an acro that was difficult, but you know, I saw this green slimer. I was like, I always wanted one of these and just the color. This has been in here for about a week and it's, it's still going good. And that's one thing I noticed, um, trying to keep, you can keep an SPS dominant tank or just SPS, or you can get an LPS dominant tank, but having a mixed reef is probably, in my opinion, it is it is a bit more difficult. Because um, trying to keep a balance of clean water, which is not so good for the LPS, which I, you've witnessed with the dosing of the NOPOX, and um, keeping enough nutrients for the LPS, and um, just keeping that balance going. And I think I've kindly, kind of nailed it down so far, so the past few weeks, and I'm just gonna keep continuing at that rate. Um, yeah, so I also dose in my top off water, I add um, sea chem trace elements and kind of keeping the top off water kind of like coral mineral water, you know, trying to get those elements in there. Um, the, you know, feed, you want to feed amino acids and things like that and the, the reef energy is, is, is basically food and that you kind of just want to dose on its own separately. And that's what I'm doing. And I'm also trying to make up for um, the Red Sea like coral care program that they give you about four different uh, elements in, which I'm actually s decided to use aquaforce and I only do potassium and iron and the I add very small amounts of that to where I know because I'm not really testing for those. So I'm adding just enough to where I know when I do a water change I can bring everything back to normal if I have to. I'm adding only uh, about three drops a week of the potassium and just one drop a week of the, um, the uh, iron. Really kind of worried about iron. Knowing its uh, reputation it will feed algae. And uh, yeah everything is going great so far. If you have any questions or comments, let me know. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, because I'm going to keep updating this in the future going on, and hopefully you'll have uh, great results of, uh, as I've been seeing in the past uh, week or two. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching.